If you're just starting out with C++, it can seem overwhelming. The standard is at least 2,000 pages long, there's a new version every three years, there's at least three major compilers, and a whole mountain of editors, IDEs, and tools. Even getting set up is complicated. But if you want to go from nothing to writing and running C++ code, then in this video, I will go through two approaches that will work across most major platforms. They may not scale to large projects with thousands of files and millions of lines of code, but they're perfect for getting started. And I personally use these for quickly prototyping ideas. First is online tooling. These require nothing more than a web browser and an internet connection. There's loads of these available, but I personally prefer Compiler Explorer, sometimes referred to as Godbolt after its creator. When you first land on the page, there'll be a window where you can type code and another which shows you the assembly output of that code. This is because the tool was originally designed to see and share the output of different compilers, but you can use it to execute code. If you click output at the bottom, this will give you another window which shows you the compiler's output. Checking output execute this code will then cause the code to execute. From here, you can start typing code and executing it. You can also drag the output window over the assembly window if you don't want to see it. Compiler Explorer allows you to compile and execute your code with a variety of compilers and allows you to easily share it. It's a great tool for quickly testing things and seeing how different compilers handle code. Even as a Vim mode, if you're like me, it habitually type colon w up to each line. Just remember that it's good to think of Compiler Explorer as ephemeral. Don't always rely on it to bring your code back when you reload the page. If you want to persist things, then click copy link and then copy either the short or long form version. When you load these links, it will always bring your code back how it was. The second option is Docker containers. These provide a simple to set up and fully reproducible environment. The potential downside is that most of these are Linux images. GCC provides an official image which easily allows you to grab the latest version. If you have Docker installed, then you can just run this command. This will download and drop you into a container with the latest GCC. If you then update the packages and install a text editor like Vig, you can start writing code and compiling it with GCC. If you use VS Code, then things get even easier with dev containers. So, if you have Docker installed, then you can just open up a new folder, open up the command palette, type new dev container, select C++, select additional options, and choose the latest Ubuntu, as this will give you a more recent compiler, wait for it to build, then you're good to go. Just write some code, hit F5, select a compiler, and you're done. VS Code might prompt you to install the recommended C++ extensions, which is always a good idea. However, if you want to bring all your existing extensions into the container, click the extensions window, click this tiny little cloud icon, select all the ones you want, and then click OK. These two methods provide a way to quickly get set up and running with C++ and are perfect for learning and experimenting. Larger projects might require a slightly different approach, but that will be the topic of a future video. If you found this useful, then consider subscribing. But if you want to learn how a compiler actually works, then check out this next video.